This one's gonna look good. I've learned a lot since the N64 video, mostly through the comments. YouTubers always complain, oh, I got one negative comment. All the good comments don't mean anything now, and I'm going to be sad for the rest of the month. But for me, I don't know, getting pots and pans banged against my head uh, in punishment of not doing something correctly makes me want to do it better. Out of fear, yes, but still. So why a PS4? Two reasons. One, this dude. Some genius many years ago in Japan thought of making a PS2 controller that is already split in half, so I can have the controls be on either side. I don't have to do any crazy rewiring with this thing. This came with a... it's a Dragon Ball card! Some kind of... one of the... I don't know anything about Dragon Ball. Alright, you guys can tell me that this is worth a million dollars and then I will make a PS5. But for now, PS4. So why not make a portable PS2 considering this is a PS2 controller? Well, somebody made a converter as well, so you can plug PS2 controllers into your PS4. I don't know 100% that it works. This comes with something too! A keychain! This is just Christmas! We'll, we'll put our gifts right here. This will be the gift corner. And stickers! I don't even want a portable PS4 anymore. I'm just happy I have those. Uh, we also got a much better battery this time that's quite a bit thinner. And then the screen is actually pretty flippin' nice too. It's about 8 inches. PS4 itself, uh, I got a little bit cheaper than usual because this was cracked already. But that's fine because we just need the insides of this. I really want to see what this is like. I feel bad because it is hard to find these controllers. There's only one on eBay. And this one's in really good condition, but I'm pretty much going to permeate it within this random homemade console. I do feel kind of bad about it. Imagine, uh, take the screen, you got the controllers on the sides, it'll look like an actual portable console. Alright, cool. Okay, so the console does work. Oh, hey! We've got movement! I don't know what the L, N, R is. Maybe it's like a... Could be a manual gearing system, to be honest. The battery itself here, it's very, very compact, actually. All right, step one on making a portable PlayStation 4. You feel super guilty that you are bought a PlayStation 4 to open it up and take it apart. Again, there's a reason I didn't do a PS5. As Peter tries to figure out how to unscrew this console, he gets very boring and forgets to say entertaining things, so I will narrate and give some relevant info during these fast-forwarded sections. So ever since the incident where my wife's uncle's dad punched me in the gut, I've had a little bit of a spending problem for these videos where I just can't help but spending as much money as possible to make some sort of weird experiment that I always wanted to do as a child. And I think it's growing into a problem. I've kind of been troubleshooting ways to maybe get this need out of me to spend absurd amounts of money. I've come up with a few ideas uh, such as pimping my Nintendo Switch making it really, really luxurious and as nice as possible. Kind of the equivalent of like a YouTuber buying a sports car, except this'll be a much smaller scale, maybe cure my desire to spend. Um, so back to the video. There's another big one. Oh, that's a real big one. That's exciting stuff. Did you guys see how big that screw was? I better, I better post a picture on Twitter just in case. Shut up. Midway through recording, I don't need you to play me Beethoven's Fifth Symphony in notification sounds. What am I missing here? I wonder how much of this we remove before the console errors. Oh, is it because I unplugged the console? Instead of turning it off and waiting? Yeah, yeah it is. I love this console so much. If you have ever owned a PlayStation 4, you know how flippin' annoying it is. Every time you turn it off, it just goes into sleep mode. You have to manually use the controller to go to the turn off instead of pushing the button on the thing like every other physical device ever known to man. And if you use the power button to turn it off and then you unplug it or you hold the power button because you just want to turn it off, you don't want to have to go into a menu and go into settings, the console will make you wait like 50 seconds. Okay, well it can't access storage. That is also a problem, but it does that, all right? Uh, it does, 100%. The thing does still turn on though, so we're good for now. We'll test it again in a minute. Thankfully, all the screws that hold the actual console to the case are marked with like these super tiny little triangles, like PlayStation symbols. So when they were making the PS4, they thought, oh, when Peter goes to open this up to make his Goofy Widow YouTube project, we're gonna give him a little bit of help. <sighs> it still doesn't help me. All right, so this is actually all we're gonna need from the console. We'll still need some cooling right around in this area, it seems like, and this fan does completely detach, so we can still use this. Let's see if this actually works. That is awesome. All right, now you die. But the battery can go something like this, and that's almost like a perfect square. 
So we want to make the case generally about this size. I do have some big Tupperware containers for this. Thank you, Ritzcracker, for holding your structural integrity right until I pick you up. Really, universe? Are you that at odds with me? Is it because I'm defying all logic and all physics by making a portable PlayStation 4? All right, uh, it is case time. So because of the way the interior of the PS4 was, I had to have it kind of be this awkward shape instead of being able to compact it more. And for the power button, I actually just chopped it right off the console so that it still had its little housing and the buttons and whatnot. We could put the battery just where the normal disk drive was. Here is a freeze frame of my arm stretching like a funny penguin cartoon character. I thought this was pretty cool. But yeah, for the most part, I just got everything in place, got the plastic to the right size is just using more Tupperware containers. Much like in the last video, I want to avoid rewiring, so that's the main reason I'm putting things in as is. And other than that, yeah, just kind of shaping plastic. Uh, here's that arm again, just in case you forgot. I, I, it's, I don't know, man. I like that. I like that shot a lot. Okay, so we got the base of the case done. So for the most part, we're just gonna put it all on. The controllers themselves, I'm thinking will be mounted somewhere up here. This part here, will be what houses all the cables and stuff, because the cables are actually quite a bit longer than they need to be. Uh, when I did the N64, I got a screen with a speaker. I forgot to get one with a speaker, so it does have a headphone jack. I think we're just going to have headphones built into this. Oh, there we go. I had it plugged in wrong. Oh, that is a nice resolution. The entire motherboard is surrounded by this metal, so I could potentially glue this metal to this without ruining the motherboard. I just have to be a little careful about it. I'm actually going to do that. I apologize immensely. I've done the terrible deed. I don't feel good about it. This all feels so wrong. This is how we mount the fan properly. In an improper manner. Ooh, guess that's worth a kiss, huh? Get, just flippin' stop! Smoking in my face, no matter where my face goes. Don't sit that there, Peter. I hate gluing this thing. It was in such good condition. But in all honesty, as much of a collector's item as it kinda is, I don't think there would ever be a point where I would use it for anything else. It's a really cool controller, don't get me wrong, but like, what is, what is actually the point? If I were gonna play PlayStation 2, I probably wouldn't be using this. Unless I got like in a terrible accident, and I literally had to have my arms at my sides. <sighs> That's pretty likely to happen too. Alright, controller's intact. Moment of truth is to see if they can support the weight of the console. They absolutely can. Like, I got, I got these on good. The only play that they have is the play of the sides of the plastic, which I will reinforce. So, that's good. I like to see that. This was gonna, this was like, I was most worried about this part. Now see how, just how small exactly we can get this thing. So we can make this flat against the console if we wanted to, flat against everything. That is fantastic. All right, let's cut this thing. And after that's in place, then we just throw all the cables in and that's it. So the other day I was contemplating my place in the universe and whether or not it has taken favor with me and I've deduced that karma is not in my favor because lately in my spare time I've been playing some Overwatch and Rainbow Six Siege with some friends. Games we have fun competing against other players and of course kind of how each game goes is very different because you're playing against different people who play different ways such as the standard with online play. But do you ever watch those videos where it's like uh, Overwatch funny moments or it's like Overwatch weekly clips or something like that or uh, funny crazy moments in Rainbow Six, and the whole thing is just like a 10-minute compilation of like, ah, this guy threw a grenade halfway across the map, and it just so happened to kill this guy. It's like a one-in-a-million chance, but it happened, and you watch the video, and every clip is like, oh, wow, that's crazy that that guy died to that. That's pretty absurd. That's why it made it in this compilation. Or the same with Overwatch. It's like, oh, man, that's an absolutely absurd lucky shot to hit as Widowmaker. It's something you would definitely put in a compilation because of how rare and crazy it is. Well, lately, every single time I play these games, every single time I die, I feel like it's something that could be in one of those compilations. Like, I don't know if I've grown extremely pessimistic of every failure I have in Overwatch or Siege, but it feels like every single time I die, it leaves me going, man, that's crazy, what are the odds of that happening? That never happens, and now it's happening every single life. 
You can see, she'll just go to the farthest corner of the map, like, oh, I'm gonna go as far away as I can from everybody else and try and sneak in this window. Surely nobody will be over here, and then there's just someone underneath that exact window. Just by pure chance, out of the hundred windows I could jump in, and they stick a knife up my butt. So that's my karma update. I don't know, I, I put the screen on the box or whatever the heck, I keep watching. Lookers and watchers, I give you the Storex PlayStation 4 Portable, which was made in Canada. It's done. And this one is nice and compact. I mean, it's not small, don't get me wrong. It's, it, everything stays together really well. The controllers, look at this. You can hold it by the controllers. You maybe don't want to pick up... No, you can do this. You can hold it like this. This is so much more of a working device than that N64 was. As much as I like the N64, it, the way that I chose to do it didn't really work with a cartridge console, but it actually works pretty good for this. I'm getting giddy. I'm getting all giddy. This is so cool. This is actually cool. Alright, I'm gonna get this thing charging, I'm gonna clean up, and uh, we'll test it in a little bit. Okay, it's been like a whole day, because this takes a really long time to charge with the cable I have. I think you can get a better one. I don't care, I'm not selling this thing to you, why do you care? Oh hey, you can see me. Man, am I ever handsome. So I did download two games. I got Overwatch, because I... Well, just because I like it. And then I got Call of Duty, because Call of Duty is the console experience. Or something. If I really wanted to put this to the test and run like cyberpunk or something, then I would want to die. Uh, every time I turn this off, obviously the battery dies, so we're gonna get this screen every single time we start the console. Um, oh, I guess I can use the built-in headphones to have sound during this gaming experience. I'm sorry you guys can't hear the console at all. I'll be sure to put some quirky poppy music over my Call of Duty gameplay of me killing people. Now this feels fairly natural right off the bat. The control sticks really aren't that bad, they're kind of grippy. Okay, am I against two-year-olds? How did I... Okay, I am level one in all fairness. <laughs> okay. Triggers are a little wonky. Sometimes it's not always easy to hold them down. Okay, I am I am against literal three-year-olds. Yeah, this guy's name was Castle. Who calls himself Castle? Oh, because I was doing versus bots offline. That's uh, That would make sense. Multiplayer. Partially installed. All right, well, uh, screw this. We're playing Overwatch. Game installing 0%, what do you mean? I wanna play online! Frickin' idiots! I downloaded both these games overnight for a reason. So I didn't have to sit here and wait. Game install, why do I have to sit on the Overwatch menu to download the game? What kind of BS is that? See you guys tomorrow! Tomorrow? Uh, you know, the thing about handheld consoles that really sells them nowadays isn't really necessarily the games for them, but the convenience. If you look at, like, the Nintendo Switch, the fact that even though it is a video game console, it is also a handheld, and although it does have a great library of games, the convenience is what really sells it. Why, hence why I will still play Overwatch on that thing, even though it's absolute trash on that console. The convenience is what really sells it. The ability to pick up and play immediately. Uh, whatever you're craving. So, we're on day four now. It's early, or at least I just woke up. I guess it's not early, it's like 12. We're gonna give this a go. Uh, one thing I have learned <clears throat> about this console is that it takes seven hours to charge. I'm not kidding. And the battery lasts for maybe half hour, 40 minutes. So, I don't think the technology is quite there yet to make these things very viable, but it's Winston, shut up. This is my chance. <laughs> no! I All right, so we got a bunch of level eights. So we got other people who are similar level to me. Hello, sir, how are you? What are you looking at? Think you're special? You get your sweet kicks from joining a game of Overwatch and just staring at the other players awkwardly? All right, we win this game, and this console is viable. If we lose this game, the console is completely worthless and I'm going to throw it out my back door. Also, uh, we don't have a single healer, so good luck to us. Nice job, poopy face! Oh, we're killing it. We're killing it. Hi, May. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to do anything! Why am I playing against Shroud? My buttons are sticking all of a sudden. I think it's because the console's getting warm. 
I just went to try and tap the screen. What is wrong with me? Who's behind me? Not my team. Hello? Well, guess it's going out the back door. It is probably overheating. It probably needs more cooling. This is something I can work on. Obviously, this dude has some problems in terms of battery life and battery charging, but in terms of playability, when it actually does run, and when you're actually looking at the screen and using the controller, this is actually fantastic. Like, if you used this screen and these controls, and the console was this size, I could still, one, I, I would still buy this and, and use it. I mean, probably not. I like this thing. I, I, I like the aesthetics. I like the PlayStation logo. I put that there. I'm pretty proud of me. I am going to say, it's gonna need some work in the future, but it is the best handheld console I've ever made, and it is beating out a lot of consoles. Tune in next time when I make a portable Ford Expedition.